Hello, this is David Mandel. Welcome to week eight of uh, CIS 240L. That is uh, Linux Systems Administration at Portland Community College. And um, this week, we're going to be looking at chapter nine in the book on uh, managing uh, Linux or Unix processes. That's in our textbook. Um, the third third edition, it's chapter nine. I believe it's eight, the uh, chapter eight if you still have the old edition. Um, before we begin, let's look at our, some, some of our routine items here. The first item is I've got a um, new background here, new backdrop. That's because I'm in a hotel room in Seattle. Um, I'm attending a conference in Seattle, which I'll say a word about in a moment here. Meanwhile, uh, let's go to our schedule. We are indeed in week eight, um, November 14th through the 20th. Uh, that means we're reading chapter nine, and we're looking at lab nine. And um, we um, do not have a quiz um, for another week, except um, we're finishing up the last quiz we have. I believe that's due Monday at, um, Monday the 14th at um, midnight or something like that. You got an extra day because um, last Friday was Veterans Day. OK. Um, we'll go over here. As always, we look at Caligator, caligator.org, Portland's event calendar. And we'll see for Monday, there's Jelly in Portland. There's uh, North Portland Coders Night. Um, Android Enthusiast Night, um, lots and lots of open source events here. Um, there's um, on Tuesday, there's more events. I'm just kind of scanning these here myself. I haven't looked at them. Uh, Portland Java Users Group. Oh, and a PHP, uh, Portland PHP Users Group, Portland Ruby Brigade. OK. Well, anyway, you see that there are always lots of neat events going on in Portland, and lots of them with an open source um, um, orientation. Um, last week, I said a little bit about um, um, Galois. Uh, just for your information, Galois was a French mathematician who lived in um, the late 1700s and early 1800s. He was a, a young, very brilliant mathematician who started an entire branch of algebra called Galois theory, which I must say, I, I took a class, a graduate class in Galois theory. And I will say, I do not thoroughly understand it, or never did. Um, but it's it, it really was an important, is an important branch of mathematics that he almost single-handedly did in his youth, he was in a fight, I believe, over a girl during the French Revolution and um, was in a duel. He was 20. He was shot and killed, unfortunately. Um, um, so yeah, which is a shame, because he could have really contributed a great deal to the mathematical field had he lived more. or. Actually, it would have been good for him, too. Um, I wouldn't want to die at 20. OK. Where we are, um, where I am here, is I'm in Seattle at a conference called Supercomputing. I wished I could give you a few pictures of it. It was in Portland a couple years ago. It's probably in Portland every oh, decade or so. It's a moderately spendy conference, although uh, going to the exhibits is worthwhile. And that's uh, uh, an exhibit only pass is $100, as I recall. Um, so it's, it's a moderately expensive conference, but not dreadful. Uh, it's, it's a great conference, and it's a very interesting uh, environment. If you ever get a chance to go to supercomputing, please do go to supercomputing. It's where all the people gather that work with big, big iron. These are the guys that do 
um, mathematical modeling where they do mathematical models of things like um, um, El Nino activities off the coast of Peru or, or uh, climate models that are these huge mathematical models of uh, things like uh, a system of partial differential equations that they're trying to solve numerically. And to do that, it takes um, just it takes forever to solve these on computers, even even in this day and age. So what they do is they try to solve the problems in parallel. You try to parallelize your algorithms where you can do multiple tasks at once. I mean, if you remember from high school algebra, when we added matrices together, you'd have two big big matrices, and since you were only adding the things in corresponding locations, corresponding rows and columns, there's no reason you couldn't assign each one of those to a different CPU and do do it really very quickly. Uh, unfortunately, many algorithms are very hard to parallelize because they are iterative in nature. But but I, but many others are parallel, and and so we try to solve these with huge parallel machines. The game in the last few years has been to wire lots of cheap computers together to make a big parallel computer. The old parallel computers were, you know, they started at twenty million dollars per um, machine. They were highly proprietary, and built by companies with names like Cray. Um, Silicon Graphics, um, um, uh, a Control Data Corporation. Um, today, the way most parallel computers are made is they're stacks and stacks of, of pretty much commodity PCs that are just stacked on top of one another. They have very, very good hardware, very fast CPUs with as many cores as they can afford, um, fast disk if they put disk in them at all. Some of them just don't do enough I.O. to bother with disk drives. And then they wire them together through the network um, using as fast a networks as they can and, and some and um, um, often multiple network cards, so um, and multiple uh, very fast um, switches, so that they can communicate between one another as just as fast as they can. And then they try to write software that basically will coordinate all these boxes. And the boxes generally each, each box runs often a version of Linux. Uh, the CentOS distribution is very, very popular with supercomputing people. And um, and you can build, you know, for $100,000, you can build a big, really big, fast, fast computer. Um, and they've even started moving away from that. Um, uh, although they do use those techniques, uh, one of the other things they've been doing is using more and more um, um, getting away from using the CPU quite as much and augmenting that with uh, GPUs because the GPU, the graphics processing unit, uh, those are, have been designed for gamers and they're really, really fast. And of course, the mathematical community has discovered, hey, there's a really, really fast processor there that um, um, Hey, gaming is numeric. Uh, the the graphics in a game is basically numeric ma manipulation. So you can use that to solve differential equations, do anything you want with it, uh, Fourier analysis, whatever. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I'm up here. I'm I'm going to have fun. Um, see a lot of really fancy, really expensive equipment and. Um, Wine and dine in the space. No, I, I probably won't go to the Space Needle this trip to Seattle. Um, although the Space Needle is uh, fun, um, um, but mostly I'm going to be working to tell you the truth. Okay, um, back to our topics here. I guess we will be going on to um, discuss Chapter Nine. Managing Linux processes in just a moment. And um, I am going to sign out now, and the next part of the video will be discussing the material for this week on Chapter 9. Bye bye.